Hi, I'm Ellen. I'm Georgette. I'm Steve. And you're watching Word, Word of, of Mouth. Mouth. I wonder if I'm beginning to guess what it is you're intending to propose. Jerko will be with his regiment in Corsica until October. That should give you plenty of time. You mean to... She's a rosebud. You think so? And he'd come back from honeymoon to find himself the laughing stock of Paris. Mm, well... Yes. Love and revenge. I saw Dangerous Liaisons. I'm going to take a shot in French. Les Liaisons Dangerous. Was that all right? <laughs> it's Dangerous Liaisons, but in French it's... Le, 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 whatever. I don't know. I don't know how to say it, but I know it was good. I did like it. I thought it was really good. It was um, long, but you, for the most part, kept your attention the whole time. It takes place in, um, in pre-revolutionary uh, France uh, in the 1780s. Uh, it's a period piece. Laura Lenny plays the Marquis, and she enlists her friend to what looks like something that's going to benefit him. You looked at her counterpart, Ben Daniels' part, the, uh, Valmont. He was hot-blooded as, as opposed to her being cold-blooded. And there was uh, no woman that he could not uh, seduce. Um, he used uh, sex as a weapon and uh, quite well. So the whole play is around this, but it's very like dark and devious. It's not, it's not about love. It's not like sexy in a way where you're like, you know, swooning or you're so involved in like this romance and your heart's pitter-pattering. You're more like, oh my God, is that really happening? I had seen the movie, so I went in there with thinking there's no way that they could possibly condense all the things that are going on in a play. I had seen um, Dangerous Liaisons, the movie, just once, but I've seen Cruel Intentions, which is like the 90s version, the updated modern version, not the period piece, which has, you know, Ryan Felipe and Sarah Michelle Gellar and Reese Witherspoon. It's a modern version of it, so it's actually set in New York City and there's lesbian making out and all kinds of good stuff. It won Best Kiss at MTV Movie Awards that year. I knew uh, Laura Linney quite well uh, from the work she's done in the past and she's one of my favorite actresses. She is a, is a delight and I was anxious to see how she would perform. Laura Linney is mean! She's wonderful! She plays mean great! She was so good! I couldn't see her in this part um, only because it, it's it's such a bad person and Laura Linney looks to me like a very good person and uh, um, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I was pleasantly surprised how well she did um, play this role which was which was ruthless she was she was absolutely ruthless I was a little like curious about her I don't really I haven't seen a lot of things that she's been in. I saw the Truman Show you know like Squid and the Whale and she always plays kind of these really neurotic people so knowing that it was gonna be like all about sex and you know, uh, manipulation and whatnot. I was like, how, why is Laura Linney in this? Like, this is gonna be totally weird. And then I left thinking, why is Laura Linney in this? Um, ben Daniels plays the part of Valmont. He was absolutely wonderful at being vicious. He did it so, you actually liked him. Even though he was as mean as the junkyard dog, you actually liked him. He was so good. He was so good, so captivating. He played it, I mean, better than John Malkovich plays it in, in the movie, where you just, you're drawn in by him, and you, you feel the charm and charisma, and you want to be manipulated by him. I like Cecile play by Mamie Gummer. She was very, oh, virginal. And there's two young ingenues that they're sort of playing against each other. They are the pawns in the game that the Laura Linney and Ben Daniels are playing against each other. Um, one of them, I guess, is Meryl Streep's daughter. She has the same nose. <laughs> Somebody told me as we were going in that there was going to be a lot of sex, and I went, ooh! And there was a lot of nakedness, too. It's a very naughty play, you know? It's very naughty. And the whole time, um, we were kind of in the geriatric section, too, which makes you feel a little bit like you're watching it with your parents. You know, and you're like, oh my god, I've never really ha seen somebody have anal sex on stage before, you know? Like, oh my god. And they fixed it so that all those mirrors gave you little sneak peeks of different body parts because they would turn their buttocks to the, to the, st the audience and the front parts of them were naked in the mirror. So if you had the, a right angle, you could see everything. 
<laughs> you saw lots of bits and pieces, you know? I mean, I there was full male nudity, and if you were stage left, you got the full view, just for a moment, but it was a nice view. It was delicious. Um, uh, that's, that's the best way to describe this uh, show. The costumes were absolutely magnificent. It was beautiful to watch. Every scene was, um, was a painting. There was only one stage setting and it didn't even matter. It didn't even matter if there was furniture in the room. You were mesmerized by the things that were going on in the room. I definitely recommend it. I mean, it's it's visually fascinating. Um, it is very, you have to be prepared for all of the sex. And, um, you know, don't go with your parents. Don't go with your children. Um, I don't even think I would go with a date, to be honest with you, because there's so much, like, deviousness about the sex that I think it would really kill it. It's a 10. It's phenomenal. It's great. It just... It just sucks you right in with all this captivating sexual tension and all these crazy things that are going on. And it's hard to believe that people could actually manipulate people to do things like that, especially in that time. I don't even know what year it was, but it was when men wore wigs and short pants. Even though the play uh, takes place in the 1780s, I think it relates pretty well to today um, uh, where there is um, uh, uh, lust and greed and uh, ambition uh, to get ahead. Uh, usually I'm fidgeting in my seat. I was waiting for it to keep going. I didn't want it to end. It was really great. Tell me you resisted him, did you? Yes, of course I did. As much as I could. But he forced you. No, not exactly. <laughs> but I found it almost impossible to defend myself. Why was that? Did he tie you up? No. But he has a way of putting things. You just, you can't think of an answer. Not even no. 